Hello everybody, it's Sanyer, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video I want to talk about New York Times article on CRISPR just this past week talking about the upcoming innovation that will revolutionize uh, this world and of course this is my first video in over two weeks actually I think it's like 16 days since I made my last video it's been a minute guys, it's been a minute um, First of all, I have a week off at my day job here, so I thought, you know what, uh, I'll be spending a little bit more time uh, maybe researching and looking at different things, things that, you know, not related to my day job and just, you know, obviously related to other things in my life, such as genomics, CRISPR. Uh, second reason is I think, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to explain this to viewers because people think that, you know, creating content, and I've already made a video on this, I'm just repeating myself, but People think creating content is just, you know, turning on the camera and just babbling, right? You got to know what you want to talk about, right? And and even for the person behind the camera, such as me, um, or in front of the camera, rather, um, you know, I, I don't want to talk about things just to talk about something, right? I don't want to make a video just to make a video, right? So I think that's why I, I, I sort of switch over a weekly video. And unfortunately, now it's been over two weeks. Now I'm gonna try to keep it weekly and not two over two weeks. I think that's a little bit uh, that I think a lot of people don't like sort of get disconnected when you use such a long pause. But you know, we'll see how we go. I mean, you gotta remember, right? We're in this weird state of the markets, and the viewership is at all times low. Not just on YouTube, but on Twitter, on Reddit. People are not talking about stocks as much uh, compared to the previous years for obvious reasons. And, and obviously we're in this space where we're all waiting for CRISPR therapeutics to have it, the FDA approved uh, potentially by the end of this year, right? So things are sort of on a halt, but here and then you get these articles and I said, you know what, let's take a look at this article in this video and again, I would love to turn this channel into more like specifically science, but I'll be honest with you guys, like that requires a lot of time on my end, right? So, uh, you know, enough with the complaining, right? I, I guess I just gotta make it happen, but you know, for today, let's take a look at this article here. So suddenly it looks like we're in a golden age of medicine. We may be on the cusp of an era of astonishing in innovation, the limits which we are not even clear yet. So of course, uh, the art, uh, auto here, Wallace Wells is talking about CRISPR. Okay, so a little bit of history with uh, Jennifer Doudna's code. Okay, the work which you Doudna won a Nobel Prize for the paper published in 2012. Okay, uh, so a little bit of history here. So take a look at world changing innovations. Uh, of course, here they're talking about mRNA. Uh, I mean, mRNA, I mean, we all know about it at this point, especially after the pandemic. Or, um, are we done with the pandemic? I think we are, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we are. I think that the WHO ended the pandemic uh, emergency, I think like a month ago or something. So, okay, so obviously here in this article, they're not just talking about CRISPR, they're talking about other things as well. But uh, most importantly here is this paragraph here. So. Although the first very person to receive CRISPR gene editing in the US received it just four years ago for sickle cell disease, it's been rolled out for testing for blindness, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, HIV, and only two applications for such treatments have been submitted to the FDA. But all told, some 400 million people worldwide are affected by one more disease from sickle gene mutations, which would be theoretically a simple fix for CRISPR. Uh, but when Downa herself imagined a application in a decade or two of down the line, the possibilities are almost intoxicating, offering single gene protection against high cholesterol, therefore coronary artery disease, for instance, in, in, or in theory inserting some, 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 a kind of genetic prophylaxis against Alzheimer's or dementia. Can we actually do it? Can we actually do it? Um, I'll answer that. Yes, we can. Uh, look at hexacell CTX001. You know, they've done it for over, what, at this point, over 90 patients. I mean, um, you know, what else you want to, you know, prove, you know, at this point, right? 
to actually answer the question, can we actually do it and get this F FDA product, uh, get the FDA to approve this product right in the US and then have a down domino effect across all regions around the world, right? So, so yeah, I mean, uh, this is, first of all, I, I, I do wanna remind viewers that New York Times is a big publisher, right? This is not just some random website talking about CRISPR. Every time you see New York Times talking about CRISPR, you should definitely take that time to read that article because one, um, it's often something that uh, the generic audience is reading. So you want to sort of get a sense of what the generic audience has visibility. I mean, New York Times has millions of art people uh, that are not involved in stock markets at all. Right? These are people just, you know, their day, day job. I mean, you know, their retirement pension fund, 60 years old, retirees. There's no way these guys are involved with anything to do with genomics or CRISPR. So when they were reading these are generic articles, I think it's a good thing to have a view of what they're reading. Uh, so you understand where mainstream media is pushing this CRISPR narrative, right? Notice that here they're talking about worldwide innovation into specifically trying to prove that it may potentially cure many, many diseases. Like the article said over 400 million people that could be literally potentially cured from just a single gene fix from CRISPR, right? Again, these are ballpark numbers. I wouldn't use these numbers as, you know, as definite there, but the, the, it is an uh, interesting article because, you know, you would expect these articles to talk about, you know, the, the what is it? The uh, gene CRISPR will, you know, make mutant humans that are stronger than you or will destroy sports or whatever people are, fantasizing right but in this article though props to the author he's specifically talking about diseases making a parallel with mrna which we've all seen what's happened in the recent years recent decade with mrna so i think there's something here to be said i mean uh and i think that's a good question can we actually do it i think that question still has to be answered you know by many organizations around the world including the fda uh, in health canada in emea EMA in Europe, uh, so or the U regulatory body in UK. So we got a bunch of regulatory organizations that have to answer that question. And then, of course, they for them to answer that question, they have to look at the evidence that they have in place, specifically about the data from clinical trials from, for example, CTA001. So I think it is a golden age of medicine, but I don't think it's just for medicine. I think it's just technology as a whole. You see what happened with AI, with ChatGPT. You're looking at what's happening in the travel industry. You're looking at what's happening with real estate. You're looking at what's happening, of course, with genomics, CRISPR specifically. I mean, we are, of course, in, in an era where, you know, I think, you know, moving out of this bear market, I think people will be extremely shocked when we see all these innovation come out um, and don't forget these things, they catch on quick guys. Like, it's not like you see this play out for like six, eight years slowly. You know, it's sort of like an S curve, right? Once it happens, that's it. It just happens and people just change their life. And look at the iPhone, right? Look at electrical vehicles, you know, it's not like electrical vehicles every year. There were like one or two more on your streets, you know, it just like, boom, Tesla just became what it was in 2017, 18, and then here we are, right? So, uh, I mean, these things take time, don't get me wrong, but there is an S-curve, right? And the moment you hit that mid part of the S-curve, things are gonna go upwards really, really fast, right? And again, this is not financial advice. I don't wanna tell you guys to buy these CRISPR stocks, although I would personally advise myself to, of course, double down on it, but, for you, you do what you need to do, right? Of course, it depends on your portfolio, depends on your situation. But man, like if there's one technology you want to follow, it has to be CRISPR. I, I mean, you know, is there any other exciting technology in 2023 than CRISPR slash genomics? I don't know. You tell me. I'll end this video like this, guys. As always, subscribe if you haven't. Like this video if you found value. Do like it. Of course, it does help this channel. Again, thank you so much, guys, for sticking around. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday. Um, hopefully not raining wherever you are. So I'll see you guys in the next video.